Everyone welcome up, Ashley. This is a really rad space. Uh, when he asked me if I had a social justice piece, I kind of racked my brain, and I thought sometimes social justice isn't just about changing other people's minds, but changing your own first. So, I'm gonna read this. She looked up at me through a tiny slit in the veil that covered her face, and I constructed a world of her oppression. I painted her victim, painted her helpless because she did not look like me. I did not see a doting husband or father standing beside her because I did not want to see it. It is far easier to defend your own prejudice than to admit to it. A woman in a hijab came to me crying once. She told me another customer had told her to remove her scarf. She was in America now. There was nothing I could do but apologize on her behalf. I should have apologized on my own. Should have asked her to tell me why she wears it instead of assuming someone had forced her to. I wish I could find the woman who told her these awful things in the supermarket. The woman would smile at me and ask me about the produce because I look like her. Because my speech does not carry another world in its breath, I would tell her she is just like me, but there is little comfort in this. I would tell her she is right. We are in America now, a place where each woman's narrative is in fact her own. What right did I have to it? What place did we have to tell her that her veil is a symbol of oppression? Did you know that the Arabic word for mankind, umma, comes from the word um meaning mother? No one told me that with a word like mankind, my own language is the larger oppressor. No one told me that my poem before this one was building more shackles than a veil ever could. I had become reckless in my assumptions, but I will be unbending in my atonement. Like flowers on a grave, a motion intended for the surviving to comfort themselves, I offer apologies too late. After hating my own body for so long, you think I'd recognize the freedom to stand in front of a room of people who could only see the piece of my face that I am the most proud of. You think I would rally behind a people that tell their men, if you cannot control your hunger, you do not deserve to look. And a culture of women who can choose exactly which man she deems worthy of beholding her. I wondered if holding my tongue or choosing a different poem would have fared better. Pools of tears gather in between the letters on my keyboard as if they are ashamed for my own misuse of them. My heart must be cracked, but at least it will be open. When I take care of her at work now, I will smile and be sure she found everything okay. The only thing I will assume about her veil is that there is a smile in return beneath it. Okay.